www.pbs.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Associated Press has won the Pulitzer Prize for its series of articles that reveal the New York Police Department has extensively spied on Muslim Americans. Beginning last August, the Associated Press detailed how the NYPD established a vast operation to monitor Muslim neighborhoods after the 9-11 attacks. Hundreds of mosques, businesses and Muslim student groups were investigated, monitored and, in many cases, infiltrated. Police monitored and cataloged daily life in Muslim communities, from where people People ate and shopped to where they worked and prayed. Police used informants known as mosque crawlers to monitor sermons, even without any evidence of wrongdoing. Also falling under the NYPD scrutiny were imams, cab drivers, food cart vendors. According to the Associated Press, many of these operations were built with help from the CIA, which is prohibited from spying on Americans. In the process, the New York Police Department became, quote, one of the nation's most aggressive domestic intelligence agencies, targeting ethnic communities in ways that would run afoul of civil liberties rules of practice by the federal government. This is an excerpt from the video that accompanied the AP's first story on the New York Police Department spying. At this move run to a New Jersey apartment, an alarming scene was found inside Unit 1076, terrorist literature strewn about, and a wealth of computer and surveillance equipment. But this wasn't the command center of a terrorist cell. The materials belonged to a secret team of NYPD intelligence officers, a unit operating miles outside its jurisdiction. The revelation sparked a national controversy that only grew as the AP continued to reveal more details of the NYPD's actions. These include the targeted surveillance of Shiite mosques following increased tensions between the U.S. and Iran, the practice of spying not just in New York but across the Northeast, financial backing from the White House for the program, and the targeting of Muslim mosques with tactics normally reserved for criminal organizations. Faced with protests and calls to resign, in February, New York Police Department Commissioner Ray Kelly defended the spying by invoking the 9-11 attacks. We believe we're doing what we have to do pursuant to the law to uh, protect the city, the city that's been attacked successfully twice and had 14 plots uh, against it in, uh, you know, in the last uh, two decades. The New York Police Department's spying has received attention in Washington, with over two dozen members of Congress calling for an investigation into the ties between the Central Intelligence Agency and the New York Police Department. Just last month, Attorney General Eric Holder confirmed the Justice Department's reviewing the NYPD surveillance of Muslims in the Northeastern United States. Testifying before a Senate panel, Holder said he was disturbed by reports of the spying outside of New York City, which included the monitoring of mosques and Islamic student groups in neighboring New Jersey. Components within the Justice Department that are actively looking at these matters. I talked to Governor Christie, actually. I saw him at a reception, I guess, a couple of days or so ago, and uh, he expressed to me the concerns that he had. He's now publicly expressed um, his concerns as only he can. Um, and I think at least what I've read publicly, and again, just what I've read in the newspapers, is, is disturbing, and these are things that are under review at the Justice Department. That was Attorney General Eric Holder. We go now to Washington, D.C., where we're joined by Matt Apuzzo, who co-authored the Associated Press series that revealed the New York Police Department spying. Uh, Matt Apuzzo, welcome to Democracy Now! and congratulations for your Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting. Amy, thanks a lot, and thanks for having me back. It's good to have you on. Uh, the series is called, that series um, that you wrote, um, the whole series is called I mean, this is a weird one, right? Because uh, we didn't set out to write a series, so um, it, we didn't have a title. I mean, this was uh, this is kind of um, classic following following the story where where it takes you. We didn't say at the beginning, oh, we're going to write a five part series or a ten part series. You know, let's time it in late September and try to you know capture it to the end of the year. Maybe we'll win a Pulitzer Prize. It's just. It, this sort of just bubbled up organically, so we didn't really have a name, you know, we didn't have a catchy title for this one. But you certainly caught the attention of many throughout this country as you talked about the New York Police Department. Explain very briefly, if you will, what happened after 9-11. Talk about how the CIA hooked up with the New York Police Department. Well, so, um, 
you know, Ray Kelly came back as police commissioner, and um, the city also hired David Cohen to be the intelligence chief at the NYPD. Um, Cohen is uh, the former top spy in the United States at the CIA, um, the deputy director of operations. So he came in basically to, to build an intelligence division um, that had, uh, had kind of become a backwater, glorified uh, chauffeur service for VIPs. Um, and, and one of his first calls was to, back to Langley, back to his, uh, his old employer. And, you know, remember, this is, uh, this is late 2000, this is 2002, and um, so he says, uh, hey, I, I, need, I need somebody. I need some, somebody to come up here and, uh, and help me out. Um, and remember, the recriminations and finger-pointing of 9-11 were really starting to happen. Um, everybody rightly was focused on how to prevent another attack. And, uh, and the CIA didn't want to say no to New York, and uh, they dispatched a, a senior officer um, to New York to basically be um, the NYPD's uh, private liaison uh, with the CIA. Um, that opened the door to a relationship in which the CIA officer who was working there um, helped set up a lot of these programs, uh, helped set up programs to um, be the eyes and e to have eyes and ears inside every Muslim community in the city. Uh, you know, um, the demographics unit, which is, uh, you know, these rakers, as you referred to, uh, informants known as moss crawlers, a lot of that was built with the help from uh, the CIA, this officer who helped start these programs while on CIA payroll. And where are the rules that say that the CIA is not supposed to be spying on American citizens? Well, there's, you know, there's an executive order um, that uh, that sets, sets the rules for, uh, um, you know, with the CIA, you know, with the different rules of all the different uh, intelligence agency, um, there's also federal law um, that uh, that says the CIA is not supposed to spy on Americans. Um, and when after our story came out, the CIA's inspector general looked into this and, and concluded there, there was no evidence that the CIA performed domestic spying and violated any laws. Um, but said, you know, look, we we probably operated. We have probably some poor judgment here, sending. Um, this officer up to New York with no oversight, no ground rules, hadn't been reviewed by lawyers, um, and, and just leaving him there uh, to, to do whatever he wanted. Um, so the CIA sort of stopped short of saying there was anything criminal or outright wrong about it, but that it, it, it probably showed some bad judgment. And um, his successor, who, uh, the, you know, the CIA sent another senior officer um, to replace him, um, you know, in 2011, uh, after our story came out, they announced that they were going to be bringing him home, and 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 he's he's left as of uh, I believe last few weeks. But has the spying stopped? Well, right. So um, you know these these programs are are still in effect. I mean, we know that um, you know, for instance, one of the one of the things we we found out was that everybody in the city of New York uh, who changes their name. Um, you know, whether because they want to officially get rid of a, uh, you know, a, a married name or um, whether they just want to Americanize their name, like so many generations of immigrants have done, um, that is, that data is supplied to the NYPD from the court system. And then anybody who has a name that sounds like it might be from a Muslim country, so, you know, uh, you know, if, if Muhammad becomes John or John becomes Muhammad, then you're going to get backgrounded. Um, you're going to ha have your travel history checked through federal databases. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll build a, you know, sort of criminal history or a, a employment history on you. Sometimes they'll check immigration records or credit records. And, um, and then if, in some cases, if they think there's any red flags, they'll actually send an officer out to interview you and say, why'd you, why'd you change your name? And we know that that program, um, you know, the, the court officials tell us they, they continue to send um, the the name records uh, you know every few weeks to the NYPD, um, so I mean you know certainly some of this is still going on. But again, remember the the NYPD is saying this is this is necessary and appropriate to keep the city safe. So you, you know we wouldn't we wouldn't expect that um, the police department would would be, make any wholesale changes. Nor were we asking them to. I mean frankly, um, our goal in this was to allow people to have a discussion about where, 10 years after 9-11, we should be putting the marker down between, you know, sort of security and liberty. And you can't have these discussions 
if you know if if you don't know what's going on if uh, if if it's just a black box where they say trust us we're keeping you safe um you know we have a uh, 350 person intelligence division a 60 million dollar budget um we can't even tell you what the the command structure looks like or the organizational chart looks like or where the money's going um, and it went you know, beyond that, New York, as you pointed out in this oh, yeah. continued series, uh, from New Jersey to Connecticut, the angry statement of Richard Levin, president of Yale University, when he learned that uh, uh, New York police uh, agents were on the campus of Yale investigating students. Right. Well, they weren't on the campus of Yale. So there's two things, right? Which, and this is, this, is, this is one of the most fascinating things for me. Having covered this, so we reported last fall that the NYPD, um, using undercover officers and informants, was actively infiltrating Muslim student groups um, at, you know, City College in New York, CUNY schools inside New York City, um, and nobody really said anything. I mean, there wasn't really much of a, of a reaction. <clears throat> and then early this year, we reported that, in addition to that, the NYPD also had a program where every day analysts would go online and go to the websites, blogs, um, listservs of, of Muslim student groups all around the Northeast. And, and that's what they were doing at Yale and Columbia, um, and, and monitoring what people were saying. And, you know, people, you know, scholars were ending up in the intelligence files, um, professors, students in some cases, not for saying anything terrorism-related, but for saying, hey, here's going to be a conference, an academic conference, and here's the speakers who are going to be there. And, and so— they, to our knowledge, they weren't on the ground infiltrating at Yale or, you know, these, uh, these Ivy League schools. But, but just the monitoring of those websites touched off such outrage in the academic community. It was really fascinating, because that outrage did not happen when we were talking about actual infiltration of City College kids, of, well, I of, working, go, of let, working class kids. Let me go to Jawad Rasul, the student at City College, uh, sure. who was among a number of Muslim college students spied on by the NYPD at schools throughout the Northeast. Rasul was named in a police report re revealed by your series about a whitewater right. rafting trip he took along with friends that was monitored by an undercover informant. I asked Jawad Rasul for his reaction. It's really disheartening, uh, to be honest. Uh, we are actually trying to be better American citizens as much as we can. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, I try to buy American to help the American economy. And then these kind of things come out, and that um, it really uh, throws us back. And I think, honestly, it's even hurting NYPD's uh, try and attempt at fighting homegrown terrorism, because these kind of tactics actually create more hatred towards them and the other law enforcement agencies, and uh, really destroys the trust that any youth might have developed uh, with the government. That was City College student Jawad Rasul. His parents were afraid for him to come on the show to make himself public, but he said he was named in the police report that came out uh, in your series, Matapuzo. Right. Yes. And well, then, I mean, yeah. go, go, Sorry, ahead. go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, that. Uh, that police report, which we made public, and it's on our website, ap.org slash NYPD, um, along with a number of documents. I mean, we, we wrestle with this idea of whether to name people, but, um, you know, sort of if you put a, if you just black everybody's names out, you know, it, it leaves the possibility, like, oh my God, this, maybe this isn't Jawad Rasul, maybe this is Osama bin Laden, you know? Um, and, and so when possible, we tried to, to leave people's names in there so people could see the documents in their entirety and make a decision, make their own, reach their own in conclusion about what the documents say, what the police department was doing, and, and, and whether it's, you know, where we want to be. And, Matt, your most recent piece was about not just spying on the Muslim community, but going after progressive groups, right. for example, the NYPD following the journalist uh, Jordan Flaherty down to New Orleans for a conference he was involved with. Yeah. Um, so the NYPD, one of the things they're, they're concerned about is keeping tabs on public demonstrations, um, which, sort of on the face of it, makes total sense, right? I mean, nobody wants— uh, Quebec riots, Seattle riots, um, everybody wants to know ahead of time what to expect. But as so for doing that, um, the NYPD had, this intelligence division had undercover officers going down to New Orleans uh, for a sort of a liberal community uh, group gathering, um, basically talking about, you know, challenging uh, trade agreements and uh, opposed to the, uh, the 
the capitalist system we have, um, you know, seen as unfair uh, by these groups. And there was nothing criminal, there was nothing terrorist-related uh, talked about here, but, um, but it all made its way into police files. And, and Jordan, as you mentioned, um, was named in a police file for, um, for introducing a, a film on, uh, on the plight of the Palestinians. Um, so it, it's, it was fascinating for us to see, you know, the length that the NYPD goes to keep tabs well as, you know, New Orleans, well outside the city, um, to anything that could potentially happen in New York City. Um, and, and most of what they, were, what they recorded had no connection to New York City. Um, so it, it really is, it just shows the transformation, again, of a, from a police department that goes out and solves crimes to one that is basically an, in, an intelligence agency that tries to identify before, what's going to happen before it happens. Um, and, uh, and, and some say that's, that's great and, and that's absolutely what we need to do, and, and others disagree. And uh, our hope is that, uh, you know, with the documents and the stories, that people can now make their own decision. Uh, the New York Post uh, has a headline, Score One for NYPD Bashing. They said, surprise, surprise, the Associated Press yesterday picked up a Pulitzer for its year-long nonstop hit job on the NYPD's counterterrorism efforts. As we wrap up, Matt Apuzzo, your response, and are you continuing your series? I, you know, I, as I said before, uh, it would be surprising to me if— People didn't have strong—this is an important issue, so it would be surprising to me if editorial writers and pundits and, uh, and regular people uh, didn't have strong feelings about this one way or the other. Um, you know, some of your viewers probably have strong feelings. The New York Post editorial staff has strong feelings. That's what democracy is all about, right? And you, democracy needs information, and, uh, and we, uh, we, we try to provide that information so people can make uh, informed decisions. So not surprised that there are strong feelings. And uh, again, this wasn't a series we set out to do, so whether it continues, I think it, uh, it continues if, if more information um, makes itself available. And, uh, we'll go where the story leads. Matt Apuzzo, I want to thank you for being with us again. Congratulations. Matt is a reporter for the Thanks Associated Press. He and his colleagues were awarded the Pulitzer Prize for investigative reporting for their series of articles revealing the extensive domestic surveillance program deployed by the New York Police Department in the wake of 9-11. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. The War and Peace Report. We'll be back in 30 seconds.